If you Google the words Europe's last dictator, here's the first hit you get. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko. 26 years of rule, a weak economy, a country with almost no natural resources, and increasing popular protests. So how is Lukashenko still in power? Lukashenko has run Belarus with an iron fist since 1994. He's been its first and only president since independence from the Soviet Union. He sees himself as the father of the nation, the protector of the Belarusian people, and the owner of the Belarusian country. Belarus was one of the USSR's most prosperous regions, a center of industry and manufacturing. And Lukashenko was its staunch Soviet loyalist politician. When he was elected president, he vowed to keep Belarus as Sovietized as possible, controlling wages and opposing privatization. But while authoritarianism remained strong under Lukashenko, the economy didn't. Belarus's growth has stalled since 2012. Fast forward to today, COVID-19 has made life even more difficult for Belarusians. The country was the only one in Europe with no measures to control or counteract the pandemic. Lukashenko's other coronavirus remedies included vodka, saunas, and working hard. What Lukashenko is known more for is his decades of suppressing anyone who opposes him. Alexander Lukashenko is refusing to give in to growing demands for a new election. Security forces used rubber bullets, tear gas and water cannon to quash protests. More than 6,000 people have been detained and at least two people have been killed. Claims swell that the Belarusian opposition leader has been filmed speaking under duress. So far, opposition to Lukashenko inside Belarus has been weak. Opposition from outside, though, has been pretty much non-existent. How did he manage that? See, Belarus sits between Russia and the EU. And that's Lukashenko's advantage, playing the two sides against each other. Here's how. The country's weak economy depends heavily on Russia, especially Russian oil and gas. So you would think Lukashenko would be heavily influenced by Putin. But whenever he feels there's too much control from Russia, he turns to the EU, seeking economic integration and promising democratic reform. That scares Russia, which doesn't want to lose its influence. Here's an example. In 2009, Putin wanted Lukashenko to back the independence of two Georgian provinces, South Ossetia and Abkhazia, where Russian troops are now stationed. Lukashenko refused, so Russia banned one of Belarus's key exports, dairy. Lukashenko then went to the EU to certify Belarusian milk for the European market. Russia backed down. Belarusian milk, once again, flowed to Moscow. See? And whenever the EU goes after him over human rights, Lukashenko turns to Russia for help. There is always the risk that in doing so, Belarus will lose its uh, sovereignty and become another Crimea or another Donbass or, or whatever. And this blackmail bargaining has been going on for, for for over a decade. Putin and the EU are getting tired of this game. Russia has gas pipelines going through Belarus. They used to be a bargaining chip for Lukashenko. Now, Russia has built new pipelines that bypass Belarus. On the other side, the EU is turning up the pressure to democratize. We don't recognize the results presented by the Belarus authorities. So the feeling is Belarus's threat to move closer to Russia is not as effective as it used to be. However, this doesn't mean Lukashenko has been completely cancelled out. 
his security services are still largely loyal and keep him in power. Some of them have turned against him, but there aren't many of those. That's because the security personnel get good benefits and protection from prosecution. But for how long? Benefits and protection cost money, which is hard to come by during a pandemic and an economic crisis. Nobody's president forever. But Lukashenko is not really planning for succession, at least not anytime soon. There are reports that he wants to make his son his successor. But the constitution says the president must be at least 35 years old. Lukashenko Jr. is 15. Which might mean Lukashenko Sr. sees himself in power for at least another 20 years. If he does go... There aren't many others who could take over. A classic effect of most autocracies. A weak opposition. No alternative leadership. And that's the drama, probably, of, of the opposition in that country, is that they never managed to, to unite behind one figure able to, to gather enough votes. Many Belarusians united behind Svetlana Tiranuskaya during the 2020 election. Not because they saw her as a strong alternative, but because they thought she might be the one to end Lukashenko's time in office. And even though she might have actually won the election, we've seen how that's working out. Revolutions don't happen every day. But Belarus is important for another reason. The road from Moscow to Kaliningrad. Between the Russian exclave and Belarus sits the Suwalki Gap. It's a 100-kilometer long border between Poland and Lithuania, both EU and NATO countries. So this area is important because it connects these members together, but it's hard to defend. If Belarus pivots to the EU and NATO, Kaliningrad could be further away from Russia. If Belarus turns further to the Kremlin, military planners say Russia could invade it so that Kaliningrad is no longer isolated for them. And in that case, it's the Baltic states that would be isolated for the EU and NATO.